morning. Welcome to Oxford History Today, the second generation. Hi, I'm Russell Courier. I'm hanging out and here Jack with Jack. Leroy. And, yep. And we're talking, we're continuing our story on uh, check out the businesses of downtown Oxford. So uh, we talked a little bit on Patterson's in the last episode. Yes. Uh, let's refresh uh, the audience and let's see what was Patterson's back years ago? Well, Patterson's has been a number of uh, commercial buildings uh, since it was established. Uh, there has been a there was a grocery, an A&P grocery here, a Kroger store. Oh, yeah. Uh, prior to that, it has been a tobacco shop, a billiards parlor. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, like a stationery, a dry goods store. So oh. the building itself uh, was built in the uh, early 1890s. Okay. And for a long time, uh, the Tunstead building, which is a three-story next to us, was the first building I on the block. I remember that. Yeah, I remember you saying that last time. That's really cool. So. So the oldest it was, well, the first building that was here back when it was first built was what? Well, it was first built uh, more as a corner uh, billiard store, cigar store. Okay. And uh, evolved from there. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, the so. interesting thing is this whole block was destroyed by a fire in December of 1878 all the way oh, yeah. down to Centennial Park. At oh, that yeah. time, the buildings were primarily wood. Mm -hmm and they couldn't stop it with the bucket brigade they had and oh yeah and, uh, when it was replaced they were all done with masonry type buildings yeah i, I remember that yeah but this looked like it had some like wood type facade up here but that's just uh, i can't really yes. tell from up here from down here well the building was you know restored recently uh -huh. to uh, have more of an appearance of the original building okay. prior to that it had kind of an art deco look with uh, aluminum uh, vertical siding around the outside. Okay, so it's like that's one thing that's great, and keeping the historic value of the building. Yes, so I find that great that when a built when a store owner does that. So why don't we take a walk down here and uh, you know check out the other okay. building? Okay. So the Tunstead building, as it was before, now it looks like it's called Shabby Chic Furniture Design. It's a consignment store now. Yeah. Yes, and prior to that, it's had a history of mainly with a hardware store, and then oh, yeah. it's been several uh, mercantile occupancies since that time. Okay. It yeah. is the oldest building on the block. Yeah, and the first three-story building. First three-story, yes. Yeah. And the only one, actually, in the town. So that's uh, really cool. And I remember seeing old pictures with the Tunset Hardware on the yeah, side. Yeah, so it was a hardware store. It was the bank originally the on the second floor and the Masonic Temple on the third floor. And before, and then after that, did the Masonic Temple move across the street? The Masonic Temple built a new building in 1912 uh, across the street where covered wagon saddle was. Okay, that, uh, that's one thing I wondered because I saw like some old, you know, mm -hmm. uh, brick type thing at the top there before, like a uh, mason symbol on top there. Yeah. So, all right, now we're in front of Sweet and Savory. Uh, what was this building originally? Well, actually it's been, um, a double occupancy for uh, for a long time uh, in the 1940s through the uh, 19 uh, early 1980s it was Grove's uh, five cent to a dollar store or the dime store as we called it. Oh, okay. And uh, prior to that, uh, it had uh, an occupancy of variety store in one half, and uh, it had a tobacco shop and some other things in the other half. Mm -hmm. Which hasn't really and changed. Yes. Oxford well, wine and beverage has their well, cigars. And uh, <laughs> in between is a like an infill. There's, there's a one-room door going in that oh, was I see. a cotton candy and a popcorn stand at one point. Oh, really? It's that just a little fill-in because the two buildings don't really connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like with this right in between yeah, here. Yeah, these right? go up to apartments above. Oh, okay. So, all right, cool. And yeah. I've always looked at it. It has like this, like, it should, it should have been one whole business without yeah. the brick facade. Yeah, this was all redone in the uh, early 1950s with the uh, mock stone on the front. Okay, that's cool. So, yeah, it's really interesting. So. So the 10 cent store, and then this side was this, as the cigar tobacco yeah, shop. Yeah, originally, uh, and then later on rather, the dime store had both halves of the building. It was oh. a large one, and then later on, there's been an occupancy of a office supply building and uh, a few other mercantiles in. Okay, that's cool. And uh, let's, get, uh, let's go this way, and we'll talk a little bit on 24th well, Street Tavern. This is uh, probably the longest existing tavern. The 24th Street, the north half of the building here, is uh, was originally the E.R. Clark Saloon from the 1890s. Oh. And so as far as continuous occupancy of a, a certain type of business, this is probably it. 
Uh, the only history I heard was before it was the 24th Street, it was Rob's place. It was Rob's, and, and before that, a few other bars and were in here. So, but it's continuous since so, I believe about 1894. Wow. I didn't know that it was something like that back yes. years ago. So yes. that's uh, really interesting. So uh, And the other half of the building, they joined the two together. This was uh, real estate uh, in the 19... 19- 50s and 60s. It was a paint and wallpaper store. All it's right. been uh, a number of, uh, in fact, uh, at the, just after the turn of the century, it was uh, a little cash grocery store is what it was called, run by a gentleman named Howard Houck and his wife. Oh, all right. That's cool. So we'll take another walk down okay. here and uh, we'll go into a commercial right now. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more on 24. On 24 so. Do you love local sports? Whether it's Oxford High School or Parks and Rec, you can buy copies of each game. To purchase your copy, call us at 248-628-9658 or give us an email at manager at occtv.org or talk to us at the next game. Hopefully we'll see you there. So what was BDT Smoke Shop back years ago at one point? Well, it's been a number of occupancies. Uh, probably the most known was it was Kozak bakery in the oh, late the 1930s and 1940s oh, wow. and up through the 50s and 60s it was known as a busy bee restaurant oh it's been a Amish furniture store it's been a shoe store a number of occupancies in there all right and I'm assuming uh, Casa Real has always been a restaurant or would no, I be wrong Ca- on? Casa Real was uh, originally uh, the building was the upper floors were uh, where the first telephone exchange in Oxford was oh wow that's uh, the telephone operators oper- had their switchboards up there. Oh. The lower occupancy uh, was a saloon for a while, then later became uh, uh, cleaners, a dry cleaners named Harold Cleaners. Oh, okay. And the, there was a gap between here and the next uh, series of buildings, which was at times a used car lot. Uh, oh. In the back was a large uh, building, a beanery or elevator type building okay. behind there in the alley that they later on uh, demolished. And in 1957, the, the actual portion here of Casa Real was built and it was, oh. became a gamble store. And uh, they filled in all the way around to the back of the other buildings. The buildings that used to sit further down. Yeah, because this doesn't were, look very his, no, uh, historical building. They, there was a series of uh, occupancies, including uh, car dealerships, uh, TV and uh, radio repair facility. A uh, restaurant on the end that was called uh, Waltman's Parkside. Prior to that, the Hamburger Hall. The Hamburger Hall sounds like a, a place num- I'd like. <laughs> a number of uh, number of occupancies in between, including real estate, a bookstore, oh. and uh, most of those were demolished uh, in the late ni- 1990s when this building was erected. Oh, okay. That was about the time when I was like going to school I think late 1990s so okay. I would have never noticed that <laughs> actually my sister would have loved it she loves you know if a bookstore was down here there's not yes. much of something like that down here so how about we take a walk down to uh, Centennial Park and you sure. can give us a little history on the area down there all right so we have the gazebo here which how old is the gazebo itself it looks historical but I don't know how well it was old. a newly built uh, item back in about 19 early 1980s they okay. uh, redid the park and built a new gazebo. It's not the first one. There was originally a large wooden bandstand uh, here in the 1930s to 1950s in the center. Oh. And, and then uh, that was demolished and they built a fountain, which was quite large. It was about 15 to 20 feet across in a big circle in the center with uh, water that sprayed out in colored lights at night. And that was oh, here wow. from the 1950s to the 1960s. That's uh, cool. I, uh, now I yeah. can just, as you're explaining that to me, I can just imagine. Yeah, they had a circular walk coming around it. And wow. then they, uh, prior to that, uh, the actual park usage, this was actually infilled with buildings. There was uh, two, two, two story homes, uh, buildings that were in between here. One was a home and one was a commercial. But the first one closest to uh, the other buildings was the uh, Baldwin Funer Parlor and Emporium. And he was a furniture oh. builder and undertaker and oh, originally okay. had his facilities here in the park. And did we he have, move up to the other side by? Well, actually, uh, he left here after the buildings uh, were torn down. They moved across the street where the Oxford Tap is, was oh. <laughs> was the funeral home. Okay, because uh, we and, talked on another place yes, out of here. There's another funeral, yeah, north, okay. north end. 
Okay, so I, yeah. I kind of got a little confused there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the home that stood here, two story, was an apartment house with some mercantile on the first floor. That was eventually moved down uh, to the west end of Lincoln Street uh, near the Daniel Axford School. Oh, and okay. And it still stands today as the oldest house in Oxford. Oh, wow, I'll have to get some footage of that yeah. afterwards. So I didn't know all that. I would just assume just walking through here is just the gazebo has been here for all along and then it's just no. an empty park. Uh, and actually the bandstand sat probably more where the flagpole is today. Okay. Uh, in the center, as so, did the fountain. So it was more like a, uh, like a stage type thing, I'm guessing, yes. it was a bandstand. I'm well, guessing. they had a community band in the 19, late 19s uh, up through 1920s. Uh, oh. Then they, when the high school took over uh, the instrumental music, well, it was done there, and they often played in concerts in the park. Oh, and now we get we the, have concerts in the park concerts today. Concerts in the park from all uh, bands from all over. Right. <laughs> so. Now, uh, music is still being played in this park, and that's the historic part of it. I yes. Say. So, all right, now uh, I guess we'll, you know, walk over this way and sure. talk a little bit, uh, like, what used to be here. Okay, so we have this south side of M24, where 5-1 Diner and all these businesses are. So this looks like a fairly new building. What yes, was here this, before? Uh, before these buildings were built in the early 2000s, it was, uh, there was a hardware store here, single story, large, about the same length as what's here now, a large single story occupancy. Okay. Uh, it was an Ace Hardware, and prior to that, it was a uh, supermarket called Cadillac Market, hmm. which built the building new in 1957 after okay. many years of occupying space on the other side of the street, on the east side of Washington. So you work, you're either on one side and then you'll work your way over to the other side yeah, of the street. Yeah, I've they noticed. tore our house down and <laughs> built the new store here. And it was the most modern store in town with automatic doors at the time. People, oh. people thought, wow, this is something new. So this was like late 50s, 60s? Uh, 1957 it opened up. Okay, so, okay, that's uh, interesting. So Ace Hardware, I've noticed there's a lot of hardware stores opened up around this there area. Were. But, you know, you needed something like that, I would feel. Cause well, as I said before, Oxford was always a mercantile center yeah. uh, as compared to some of the other areas. Mm -hmm. I believe it. And so, uh, all right, so it's cool to hear a little bit about this, and it, you know, about this side. So uh, over here at the Oxford Bank. The Oxford so Bank, yes. That, that area was uh, originally uh, a large two-story brick home called the Bliss Home. Mm -hmm. And the Bliss Home uh, was a convalescent home for elderly people. Oh. And next to it, to the south was a wooden uh, two-story home that had been converted into uh, commercial, and it was actually Dr. Walton's optometry office. And then you there said was Walton, my mind went to yeah. a TV show. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Dr. Walton. Then there was a, a antique store and another residential occupancy, followed by a grocery store on the corner, which has been both IGA and oh. uh, Kroger store at one point. All right, that's cool. And uh, I've heard stories about how Oxford 7 before when it was like the yeah. fire station. Right. And the corner was the fire station and the original village office is on the second floor. It was a brick uh, building. Mm -hmm. And the uh, so. next so. to the next to the fire station was the Oxford Theater, okay. which was originally called the Oxford Opera House until that's Motion Pictures came in. It had an onion-shaped dome on the on the oh. front of it, uh, very, uh, I guess it was a Byzantine structure is what they called it. Okay. And it was built uh, in the early 1890s. And then there was a gap originally between that and uh, where we see downtown Salon. And that was originally uh, wooden and filled with, uh, there was a cigar store in there. There was a feed building uh, where you could oh. pick up different grains and feeds. In 1910, they had a major fire. Uh, they, they, I think there was an arsonist, and those buildings all burned out. They were replaced with uh, a brick structures. Okay. And they built a three-story building in between the theater and there that was called the Reed Building. The Reed Building. And the Reed Building had uh, farm implantry in it. It had uh, dry cleaners later on. Oh, okay. A number of occupancies. It was uh, Beekler's and Sons machine shop for years till they moved to Broadway Street. Oh. And when the theater caught fire in 1972 and burned. It severely damaged the fire hall also, so they vacated that building. And the Reed building stood next to it. So when those buildings that had burned were demolished, they, to make way for the new theater, they undermined the footings of the Reed building and it collapsed. Oh, wow. So they ended up taking it down also. And as you see today, you have the, the Oxford 7 covers the entire area. Yeah. 
So okay. The, so down, where did the fire? On, uh, uh, where did the uh, the fire station move after that, though? After the fire station vacated here, they temporarily occupied a, a former collision shop on uh, West Burdick Street, right behind the museum, where oh. the parking lot is. Okay. That had all been bought to become parking lot, so they they used that temporarily till they built a station behind the village offices. Oh, on uh, okay. the other side of Burdick Street, and then later when they moved to their new facilities on North Washington. Where the old high school used Correct. to be. Okay. Correct. Okay. So, the uh, downtown salon was uh, the Oxford leader. Uh, the newspaper was in there, and I should oh. point out prior to that, they were even in this uh, building to my left here, which is the, the Ox now. They were in that area there. Oh, no way. In that row of buildings that had been torn down. Oh, well, uh, interesting. There was a number of occupancies uh, in the next two over the years, uh, appliance stores, uh, there was a chiropractic uh, practice on the second floor. Uh, the tap has been uh, a plumbing shop, it's been uh, a tavern for a number of years, and as I mentioned earlier, it was a funeral home oh, in, yeah. in its earliest inception. All right, and uh, so the tap there, but uh, the other side the tap's working on now, it was Cam Logic. Uh, was that the other part of the funeral home, to, uh, uh, the furniture, furniture no, shop? No, they actually, uh, had uh, an occupancy in some place else in town at that point. Oh. Uh, it's not not known for sure what the, the time span was when they vacated the facility where we are here in the park okay. and moved over there. But okay. it's believed to have been right around 1900. Okay, okay, cool. So, uh, all right, so let's walk down this way a bit more. Um, so we got Golden Dragon. Uh, From the, the Golden Dragon to uh, Covered Wagon Saddlery, that area was all heavily damaged by fire in oh. 1966. Oh, and wow. um, the two buildings immediately south of Covered Wagon, uh, where Pet Paradise is, and uh, Raymond you see James, Raymond James and the, the, the yeah. boutique, that, yeah. uh, those are completely new buildings. And the outside facade of the Dragon is the same, although everything else was replaced in it. And uh, where Raymond James is, is actually where the Cadillac Market originally was be before, before they had moved here. across the street. And that was known as the Atchison Building, which was built there uh, after the fire, and Atchison's Jewelry moved into that building. Oh, the okay. gap between the buildings was never never filled in. That was uh, a building where the fire had started, and that was originally called Oxford Office Supply, but oh. not related to the other off Oxford <laughs> Office Supply. <laughs> no relation with the street. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, that's interesting. And then we got Covered Wagon. The covered Wagon Saturday Saddlery, that's the Masonic Temple call. Building, okay. and that's an interesting building in that it was built in 1912, and it was originally a three-story building, oh. and uh, it had a large uh, brick front that even the facade went up above the roof line, and oh. it burned in uh, 1957, and when it was rebuilt, they only built it to two stories, oh. and it was damaged again when the fire struck in 1966, and it had to be some work redone on it then. Well, well, there's nothing but fires in this town. There's been a lot of fires in the downtown over <laughs> the years. There must have been some type of arsonist or something no, like were, that. Many of them were accidental, but there oh, were okay. some arson fires. <laughs> it's uh, like, you know, it should be documented alongside like the Great Chicago Fire or something <laughs> like that, I would feel. And you and I were talking earlier about uh, covered wagon saddlery building because that was also the temporary offices for the village and township oh, when yeah. they built their new building on uh, Burdick Street at the time. Uh, the village uh, had a house, and the township had a house next to it. Okay. And they moved into the, uh, the cover wagon saddlery building, and were in there almost two years while their new building was being built. Oh. Okay. But prior to prior to the fire, that was a double occupancy building on the first floor, and uh, originally it was a large single occupancy, and a clothing store had been in there, department type store. But then they split it up and it was a tavern in one half and an electric company in the other half where they sold appliances and electrical uh, repairs were made on, on different things there and they contracted out electrical services. Oh wow, cool. So uh, I guess we'll take a walk over here and get the, other, uh, get the rest of the corner here. Sounds and, good. And uh, go on from there. Canine Stray Rescue is Oxford's own local dog rescue. Each year they take in hundreds of dogs and bring them into suitable homes. A certified nonprofit organization, Canine Dog Rescue strives to give pound dogs a new leash on life. To donate, adopt, or even volunteer, call them at 248 628 0435 or go to their website, dogsaver.org, 
and click on the K9 Stray Rescue League link. All right, now we have the Oxford Party Store here. Now, was that always a party store or? No, it's been a number of buildings, but a uh, party store for a number of years. It was uh, uh, party stores by the name of uh, the Oxford Party Store, Baldwin's Party Shop, Vans. Uh, oh. Vans was a party store and actually a soda fountain uh, was in there for years. Oh, wow. And a number of confectionaries. Next to it, in the north half of the building of what is the party shop now, has been a barber shop. Uh, it was Jack McGee's Oxford Barber Shop. It was oh, okay. uh, prior to that. It was a woman's clothing store named Myrna Gay. Again, oh. they had a fire and they oh. closed, uh, <laughs> yeah. and it was remodeled. Okay. The building next to it, uh, Pink and Charlie. Pink and Charlie's has been an insurance agency uh, for a number of years. Uh, okay. The original start of community insurance was in there. And oh. It was uh, Harry Hall Insurance. And then we had, uh, where Victoria's is, was the Farmer State Bank originally. Oh. And in the 1930s, when uh, the Depression was setting in pretty bad, mm -hmm. they had a, what they call a bank holiday. All banks in the country were ordered closed by the federal government and to be evaluated whether they had funds to continue operation. Oh. And it was determined that Farmer State Bank did not have sufficient funding to uh, continue, so they were liquidated. and. Their accounts were paid off over about five to six years. Uh, only about 50% was totally paid. A lot of people oh, lost really? money. The village had money in it. The schools had money. And oh. it really made for tough times for the community. Oh, okay. uh, the Oxford Bank continued to operate, Oxford oh. Savings Bank. Really? So. The, uh, after Farmer State Bank, it, it uh, served as a clothing store. And then for a number of years was Atchison's Jewelers before they moved and built the new building after 1966, oh, okay. further south. Oh, interesting. And then going north of that, um, where the Michigan store is, oh, yeah, okay. was uh, originally a drugstore called Price's Drug Store. And later on, it was Mitchell's Drug Store. Uh, Mitchell's moved over to the other corner where uh, Red Knapp's is for a while. Oh, OK. And uh, that building you know, was repurposed and sat empty for a long time. In between the two was a small uh, occupancy that was uh, Don's Barbershop. Oh, that okay. Was, that was only about maybe 10 feet wide. <laughs> and then uh, the big Fine. building on the, on the corner. Oh yeah, uh, which is Wireless Toys. Wi wireless Toys like, and the Allstate. Yeah. Those were a uh, number of occupants, but they were always uh, department stores after they read Baxter's department store. And then oh, okay. Blaschel's Jewelry was where the Allstate is. Oh yeah, I remember we talked in the last yes. episode how, you know, the jewelry, short, the jewelry store and clothing stop, uh, shop was right there at the corner. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, one thing, uh, you were telling me about uh, a tree line that was along yeah. 24 here. So, All the uh, way up to just about where we're standing. Okay. On both sides, there, there were trees, a lot of trees. More than what we see here, Oh, yes. And when the highway was widened in the 1950s, they came through from village limit to village limit and widened it four lanes. It had been a oh. uh, maximum of two to three lanes before. And oh. in doing so, they required cutting all these trees down. Well, the village sued to uh, prevent the trees from being taken down, and it was a long court battle. Oh, and wow. they finally lost to the state, and they took the trees down. Hmm. But uh, if you can imagine, this was really beautiful when it had tall trees all the way down through. Now that you're saying that, I think I do remember seeing a picture at the museum of like, yes. I might have seen that. Uh, yeah, I, I understand where they're going with wanting to keep some nature in the village and everything, but then again, you need to widen the uh, road. The volume of tra traffic was necessitating yeah. it, and that was just prior to on either side of town when they started widening them into divided highways. Oh, okay. So that's really cool. I feel like not many people would know that at all, and that's like something that I feel like people should know. Like, And I've mentioned it before, down the center of Washington Street was the Detroit United Railway. Yep. And they uh, they were there from the turn of the century up till about 1921 when they put them behind the stores. Oh, yeah, and then the, that uh, went up The state took over the highway and said they had to get the tracks off the main street. Oh, that was kind of, I kind of feel bad about that because I think that that added character. People will come up 24 and look at you know the businesses and everything instead of being pushed back behind, just me personally, but 
Well, it was a big. It was a big event in the 1900s, uh, just after the turn of the century, when oh, they yeah. brought the first cars into town. There was mm, big I celebrations, bet. and I, I would believe something as big as like the Lone Ranger Festival or something nowadays, yes. or maybe bigger. <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, I think maybe we should walk around the corner and talk a little bit about stuff on Burdick Street. Right we can now. do that. All right, well, let's take a walk. So, Jack. This spot right here is a bit historic in itself, right? Like, uh, you're telling me this corner here. Yeah, the, actually where Hudson Street comes out to Burdick was uh, in the late 1870s, there was a building stood there called Burdick Hall. And that's oh. where they held the public meetings. Uh, the village meetings were there. And uh, it was on this uh, site until around 1900 when it was uh, taken down. Oh, OK. And then uh, 1900, they moved across the street to well, the Masonic Hall? Or? No, uh, actually, uh, they, they actually built the fire station and they had the second floor of that for the village offices. Oh. And they were in that building until about 1963 when they moved uh, down to the site where they are today. Oh, okay. All right. Is there anything else about this well, area? Over the years, this has evolved into a parking lot from just one or two parking spaces. There was a duplex home stood here which had an apartment in it, later a commercial occupancy. There was a photo shop in one half of it. Oh yeah. Then immediately behind it, where you see the blue car back there, that was uh, the post office from uh, about 1948 until, uh, I want to say, the late 1970s when they built on uh, East Burdick Street. Oh, that's an okay. And uh, the post office, there was, after that, there were three more homes between uh, there and, and the present law offices where Phil Maxwell is. And now it's just a wiped out parking lot. Yeah. And then now it's parking. Wow. Behind the post office was a large tin type building, which is a shed that was probably a couple hundred feet long. Oh. And that was part of Tunstead's hardware. That's where they did their tinsmith work, uh, pipe threading, and any kind of heavy machine work was done inside that, that uh, tin building. It was also their storage for appliances and things that they sold in the store. Oh, interesting. And there was a dirt alley that came in off of Burdick Street and ran the full length of the back of all of the businesses oh. down to where uh, the present alley exits down there closest to the buildings okay. at uh, the corner of Denison Street. All right. So there's just a dirt alley all the way down Dirt there? alley. All of the alleys uh, originally were dirt, oh, and then they, they paved them uh, later on either into parking lots or into separate alleys. Uh, OK. Interesting. You know, I would have never known. There, there's yeah. no plaque or anything yeah. to say, no, like, no. I, you know, this was the former place of the Burdick Hall. Um, and it's like, where did the name, I, I never, I've heard the name before, but where did Burdick come from? Like, was, Burdick, uh, Burdick was uh, named after an early doctor in the community, Dr. Oh, Burdick. Oh, that's right. I think we did talk, I think you and Terry uh, yeah. talked about that on the first. So it, uh, had, you know, was named in, in his honor. And I, and I also was looking at some photos, which reminded me as I'm standing here, that when the Detroit United Railway went in, they also had a rail siding that ran down about to the back of these buildings off of Washington Street so that they could pull trains into the siding when other trains that had the right of way could go on through and oh. not be interrupted. So, okay, so no head on collision. No head on collision. Which they seem to have quite a few of oh, on wow. the DUR because it wasn't uh, signaled with uh, electronic signaling. It only ran on a time schedule basis. If you ran ahead of time or late, you could cause a problem. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I would have, I thought that maybe like at the five corners there was like a turnaround or something no, like that. No, it was the actual siding that came oh. on through. Oh, well that's cool. I see, I love learning new, new bits of history every day and that's kind of, like, I'm glad that we get to do this show and because I feel like not a lot of people in Oxford know about this and they, you know, I feel like it's something that they should know. And well, you come to the museum a bit more often yes, and learn about it. That's, you know, why I'd like to welcome people to come to the museum. We're there. Hmm. on Thursdays and Saturdays from 1 to 4 and it's uh, got a lot of interactive displays that you can look at and see what things looked like then and now. Well you heard it there folks. Come up to the museum and check out Historic Oxford. I'm Russell Courier. And I'm Jack Leroy. And this is Oxford History Today, the second generation. generation.